Okay, so for a long time now, Consta Kang has made some excellent builds of Android for the Raspberry Pi. And uh, one of the things it doesn't come with is Google Play Store. So I thought I'd show how to install it and how to install the Google Play Store. You can see Google Play here and uh, if I hit home, this is Android 12. So what I'm gonna do, this is running from an SD card in my Pi 4 at the moment. You can run it from USB, uh, so an SSD drive or a USB stick, but I'm gonna run it from SD card. So let's shut this down by pressing F5 and uh, go to power off. And when the light stops flashing on my Pi, I can switch that off. And then I can plug in my USB drive and I'm just gonna take out the SD card uh, just so that it boots from the SSD drive. I've got Twister OS running on this SSD drive, but you can pretty much use any operating system to do this bit. Okay, so now that's booted the operating system I'm gonna be using, I can pop my SD card in. So if you go to a web browser and type in Consta Kang, Mine picks it up pretty quick, so type it so much. Uh, and then just click on the main site or the Raspberry Pi 4 link. And there's two new versions here. So there's the Android TV version and the normal Android one. I prefer the normal Android one. Uh, I might do a separate video on the Android TV one. So let's click on that. And if you scroll down, there's a download link here. Click on that. Click here to start download. And if you scroll down, it will show a load of mirrors. Just pick the one that's nearest to you. Now I've already downloaded this. Uh, let's just go to my downloads folder. And you can see in here, uh, Lineage OS 19. Now I've already unzipped this, um, but uh, the Android TV one I haven't unzipped, so I'm gonna unzip that one just to show you how to do it. So right click and extract here and that will take a few minutes to unzip that. Okay, so that's all finished. I uh, don't know what that is. But uh, so we've got rpi4.image and rpi4atv. So I've got the TV version and the standard version of Lineage 19, which is Android 12. I can delete the uh, zipped one now, just to save a bit of space. And let's go to Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's click on that. Choose OS. Scroll all the way down, use custom, find the one that you need to install. So Lineage 19, so that's the TV version. So I want this one, the non-TV version. Hit open, choose storage. Uh, it's my 64 gig SanDisk card and hit right and yes. Okay, that's all done. So I can shut this down now. Once the light stops flashing, I can power it down. I can remove the SSD drive now because I'm only going to be using the SD card that's in here. Switch that on, and you can see Android starts to boot up. And this bit's pretty much normal starting of Android, so let's hit start, accept the license agreement. I like to have a pin number on mine. And I'll skip the restore apps and data. I've never done this before, but I always like to start off with a clean install. And start. Okay, there's a few things we can do now. Uh, so if we drag up from the bottom, so left click with the mouse and drag up and go to settings. If you scroll down to the bottom, about tablet, and look for build here. So you can see build number Raspberry Pi 4. If you keep clicking this, you'll get developer options. You can see two steps, one step. There you go. Pop your pin in, you are now a developer. Now we need to go back to the web browser, so let's hit home and browser. And let's go to Consta Kang's page because we still haven't got Google Play Store on this. So if we want to install apps, we would have to sideload them or use an APK installer. Uh, but I like to use Google Play Store. So do a search for Consta Kang. We can click on this one, Consta Kang Raspberry Pi 4. And here. So the version we've got is this one, Android 12 Consta Kang. Just close the advert. And if we scroll all the way down, there is a bit on installing the Google Play Store. Lots of other instructions in here as well. Definitely worth it for looking for keyboard shortcuts and things like that. And here we are, how to install Google Apps. Now you can use Nick G Apps or you can use BitG Apps. I've used BitG Apps before and it's always worked for me. And in fact, that's what I installed on the build you saw right at the start of the video. So BitG Apps. So this device is ARM64. Scroll down and look for the one that's for Android 12. So ARM64 Android 12. 
Actually, I can't see one for TV there, so I don't know if this method will work the same with the TV one. I'm pretty sure the Android TV has a different set of G apps, so make sure you get the right one. So ARM64, Android 12. And allow that to download. And it comes up with this strange one. Uh, hit dismiss and just try it again. And you can see here that it says download BitG apps. I don't know why it does that, but it did that to me before. So now hit download. We can drag down from the top left and we can see the download. You can see it's still downloading at the moment. So now that's finished, uh, we can go to home, drag up from the bottom, go to files, and then downloads. And we just need to rename that file because it doesn't come up as a .zip file. So if we right click it, and hit rename and then at the end of it we need to put dot zip and hit OK. Now we need to go into settings so again drag up from the bottom and settings and scroll to the top and type restart and you get advanced restart click on that and then enable it. So now we need to hit F5 and restart and recovery. So now we need to press install, click on the BitG apps we just downloaded and swipe to confirm flash. Okay so that's all finished when you get done down here. Hit wipe Dalvik and swipe to wipe. Then on this bit I go back and back again and back again hit wipe on here, swipe to factory reset and then go back and back again and reboot and I want to go to system. So go through all these steps just like before to get us back to the desktop. Now you can see the Play Store on the desktop so if we click on that and just log in like you normally would. And as you can see, we now have the normal Google Play Store and we're signed in. Now we need to expand the partition and I'll show you why. If I drag up here uh, and go to storage, oh, click on settings and go to storage, click on storage, you'll see that it's only using 8 gig in total. Uh, so it's going to run out of space pretty soon and this is a 64 gig SD card. So I'm going to shut this down, so F5 and power off and eject the SD card and I'm going to boot up from my SSD drive which has got Twister OS on it so switch that off and then back on again. Now I can put the SD card in and let's start up Gparted so Windows key start type in Gparted and click on that and the password on Twister OS is Raspberry if you haven't changed it. So you can see at the top here, uh, it's actually already picked the drive that I want, 59.48. If I click on it, it shows me my SSD drive, uh, but I want this one. And you can see here there's loads of unallocated space. So let's click on this partition, the last partition, right click and resize. And let's drag it all the way across to the right and click on resize. Click on the tick and then apply. And that will apply all those changes and then we'll have the full use of the SD card to, to store all our apps and games on. So let's close that and close that down. So now we need to shut down and reboot Android again. So I'm all rebooted, uh, so let's do a few tweaks to the system. Uh, so if I go into settings, as you can see I've already been installing some things, and uh, scroll down to the bottom and system, scroll down to the bottom, Raspberry Pi settings. So you can see here we can change our audio device and a few options have changed now so you can use either HDMI for audio or you can use a separate DAC or you can use the 3.5mm jack which is what I'm using. You can change the display resolution if you want. Uh, you definitely get better performance at lower resolutions. I'm going to leave this at 1920 by 1080 for now but I might lower it. Display rotation is nice to see so if you're going to do a vertical build. Uh, you can see touchscreen options here as well. And I'm going to overclock to 2 GHz. I 
And I see this at the bottom. I hadn't noticed this before. I think it came out in the previous build. Experimental H.264 hardware video decoding. So uh, I wonder what that will work with. I'm just going to turn it on anyway um, and see what happens. Right, so let's go back to the main screen and uh, go to the Play Store. Actually, we need to reboot because we want to apply the overclock setting. So F5 and restart and system. So let's plug in the dongle for my wireless Xbox 360 controller because that's just the easiest controller to use. I plug it in USB 2 because it uses less power and I can press the home button and uh, as you can see it's already set up. I have access to everything on here. So let's have a quick look at GTA San Andreas because I've not been able to install this on Android before on the Raspberry Pi. I have done it in uh, Fido S but not on Android. So let's see if it launches. Battery. And it doesn't. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, so let's go to the Play Store and just show you that it installed as normally. So I did a search for it and you can see it says play up the top here. Uh, let's try and launch it with that and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I might have to play around with some settings for that one. So let's try something else. Bit of Max Payne. Oh, looks like this is... Uh, Letting me launch. The sound is decent. Now I haven't tried this. I used to have this on PC, uh, and I just bought it. It was two ninety nine. Uh, so let's have a look. So new game, fugitive. All the menus and everything seem to work alright. Oh, let's turn the speaker back on. I turned it off while I was editing. Looks good. I released my finger from the trigger, and then it was over. Can I get my phone? <laughs> I shoot my phone. Oh, I'm in bullet time. <laughs> I don't know how to get the phone. Um, it looks like it's running slow, but that's bullet time. So this is where you can target enemies uh, in slow motion. How do I turn that off? Right, so... Uh, left trigger turns that off. Alex wouldn't have set up a meeting at a closed station. Okay, so involved. gameplay is absolutely fine. I can't show the intro because it's a bit grim, um, but uh, yeah, it's very, very good. Someone's shooting at me somewhere. Oh, there's a train. But yeah, you can see it's actually working absolutely fine, lovely and smooth. Right, so let's quit out of that. I'm going to come back to that though, definitely. Let's just try a quick bit of YouTube. Uh, I'm going to cover a bit more on Android 12 because I, I can't really do it all in a tutorial video. Uh, so have we not got... Does it not come with YouTube? I guess it doesn't come with YouTube because it didn't have the Play Store. So let's install YouTube from the Play Store. There we go and see if this video hardware uh, makes a difference because we haven't had video hardware acceleration in Android on Raspberry Pi before. We've had 3D acceleration, as you could just see. So you can see it installs nice and quick. Everything feels really nice about the operating system. It, it, it just feels uh, really stable, feels nice and fast. Right, so let's hit open and then click on this one and see how it plays after the advert. Now is that green? Is that, is that the 3D acceleration? It does say experimental and it's great to see they're working on it. Okay, so uh, actually I've had, I've had this weird uh, video mode on Android before. So auto, higher picture quality, is this going to go straight to 1080? I can already see it's nice and smooth. So let's pause that and uh, go back to settings and turn off that experimental uh, feature. I think it was near the bottom. Yeah, it was near the bottom. So let's turn that off. I don't know if I need to do a restart. We can go back into YouTube and just have a look. I possibly do. Yeah, I do need to do a restart. So let's do that. So F5 and restart and system. And let's launch YouTube. Yeah, you can see the video is certainly working all right on the advert there.
Yeah, and looks pretty decent. Okay, so I'll cover this more because this is more a tutorial video. Um, but uh, thanks very much to Consta Kang for the great work on this and everybody else involved in the project. Uh, it just keeps getting better and better. And uh, when you add a touchscreen to this, it gets even better again. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.